right, let's get started this evening. Glad to see you in the house, Lord. Sister Nita, bring the children on. Thank you. 
worthy of our worship and I'd, I'd like to offer a sacrifice of praise tonight I believe we've got it better than they had it in the old covenant and we've got a better covenant better promises we've been studying that for several weeks now I'd like to offer a better praise tonight wouldn't you J just make it a little better than it was this morning you got to set that standard I, I don't know what it was for you but just turn it up a notch tonight I'm looking forward to hearing Braden, I was a bit worried there for a little bit when his mom and dad still hadn't got here. I was wondering what they know that I didn't. I asked Braden, I said, they know something about this that I don't? Because generally your mom and dad will come here when nobody else will. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, I appreciate his two amigos coming here and supporting their brother. We've got a, a, a non-youth service tonight. That's normally youth service, but I mean, we've got some a, a, a young person singing. I think Chelsea's lined up here to sing in a little bit. But let's just have church tonight. What do you say? So again, let's just take it up a notch. Whatever your normal is, let's get better. All right, let's stand all over the house. Brother Nathan's coming to lead our worship. Let's lift our hands and let's just start it off right with worship right now. Father, thank you.
247. If you want to get a non young person to lead song service as well. 247. Let's worship.
Aren't you glad? Glad for that day. It's coming. It's on its way. They always said growing up that they are glad to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. They got the victory and they're looking forward to making heaven their home. You ever heard that phrase? You know, this is my house. When you're young, this is my home. This is, you know, I don't think of, the older you get, Uncle Bill, the older you get, the more relevant the subject of heaven becomes, it seems like. And I'm glad that it's a consolation that I have. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But I'm glad that our hope is not in this world. It's in the life to come. It gets hard sometimes, really hard sometimes here. But I'm glad this is not the only hope that I have. I have a hope, I have a hope in a home that's so much better. I want to go there, don't you? What do you got to do to make it? You just got to keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep praying. Keep pushing. Don't back up. Don't let, don't, don't let go. Just keep doing what you know to do. Try to tell kids, especially our kids, if you just did what you know to do, how much better life would be. But you know, us adults have to be told the same thing, don't we? If we would just do what we know to do, wouldn't life be a little bit better? Just a little bit? I mean, is it not worth just a, a little extra prayer time, a little bit of extra consecration, just a little bit of more worship? Isn't it just worth a little bit more of that to, to see what God might would do in our lives? Yes. Amen. Amen. Page 212. That's enough of that lecture. That's on my heart. Amen. Let's worship the Lord here this evening. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the fire and light. If you win, my brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the fire and light. Well, there are many dangers that we all must face. Well, if we die of fighting, it is no disgrace. Coward in the service. Find no place, so keep on the firing line. Oh, well, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Well, never run, nor even lie behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the firing line. Oh, well, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. On the fire and line. Oh, life is but the labor for the master dear. Well, help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Well, great you'll be rewarded for your service here. So keep on the fire and line. Well, well, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. Well, The fire and light. Well, well, you must fight. Be brave against all evil. We'll never run, nor even lie behind. If you would win for. We'll do that second verse again. Well, God will only use a soldier. He can't trust. Oh, keep on the fire and light. Cross you must oh, keep on the fire in life. Here it is. Well, life is but the labor for the master, dear. Well, help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Well, great job, be reward. 
sister, but there is a reward. But I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Great you'll be rewarded for your service here. I'll tell you something else. Great you'll be rewarded for your worship right now. He inhabits the praises of his people. If you'll push past everything else and offer a sacrifice of praise, I still believe the fire the Holy Ghost will fall down upon the altars and God will accept your worship tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, if you're in 
the battle for the Lord and the right. Keep, Keep on. on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must find. Keep on the firing line. Oh, life is but to labor for the master, dear. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Oh, great, you'll be rewarded for your service here. Oh, keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Oh, never run nor even lag behind. If you're going to win for God and the right, oh, keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, be brave against all evil. Oh, never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. Oh, never run, nor even lag behind. If you're going to win for God and the right, just keep on the fire in line. Come on, come on, Chelsea, get ready to sing. Come on, Tom, testify, watch this come. Well, it's feeling good in here tonight, and um, I just... I was um, looking at something the other day. Uh, this man goes to local colleges, and um, we'll talk about the Bible and Jesus. And uh, one of the college students came up and was talking about um, an Egyptian god that apparently came from the dead three days, 12 disciples, almost exactly the line of Jesus. And the man said, you know, yes, some religions have right the same as our, but I want to prove one fact. He said, if you pay attention, they're not historical facts. He said, people that don't even believe in God knows that Jesus was here. And that stuck out to me. People that don't even believe in God knows that Jesus was real. What also stuck out to me is this is not just the only real religion. It's the only religion in the world where he came down and died for us. All those other false religions, you got to work and work and work to try to maybe get a shot at going to heaven. But no, in our religion, he came and died for us. And not just our religion, the true religion. And that's something to fight for, and it's feeling pretty good tonight. And I just want to remind us of that. Our religion is the true religion and the only religion tonight where he came and died for us. Oh. 
service tonight. I appreciate the presence of the Lord that is here. I appreciate your response to it. I think one of, one of the, the most beautiful aspects of the service so far tonight is when Nathan was singing the first song. I'll trade this old cross for a crown. I, I could hear, I know you can't hear it on the live stream, but I can hear the crowd singing. Boy, there's nothing more beautiful to me than God's people singing God's praises. We forget about everything else and we just lift our voices as a group. And I think about it when with all that heavenly host we begin to sing. I appreciate the presence that's here right now. I've told you so many times. I, I, love, the, I love the emotionalism. I love the, I come from Kentucky. I love fast singing. I love that. But I love it when it's rich. When we're singing about the glory of our God, as Sister Chelsea just sang, how great our God is. I just want to worship. Jesus told a group who complained about John the Baptist. They didn't like how John the Baptist did it. They didn't like how he was doing it. And Jesus said, you're like children playing in the marketplace. We, we've, we've popped and you didn't dance. We've mourned and, and you didn't cry. Playing a game. If you look at it, they said, we've, we've had a wedding and you didn't dance. We've had a funeral and you didn't cry. What does it take to move you? That's what the premises is there. John came. You didn't get with John. I'm here. You didn't get with me either. What does it take to move us tonight? God, I, I, I just want to move. If it's in the, the singing we were having a moment ago, I want to move. So that's just not my thing. But then, then, then we come into the somber, just the sweet presence of the Lord, and we're still not moving. I, I, that should clue us in there that the problem is not in the moving of the Spirit. 
the problem is in my connection with the Spirit. And I want to be connected. If God wants to pipe, I want to dance. If God wants to mourn, I want to cry. I just want to be in the middle of whatever God is doing. And I, again, I appreciate the atmosphere tonight. And uh, before we get Brother Braden out here, I, I do appreciate Mike and Tom uh, jumping up here and, and helping to support Braden tonight. And uh, little Steve and I were talking this evening on his way over uh, to the hospital. And I, I am behind these young men. They, they need our support more right now than they ever have. You talk about those tur turbulent teenage years. Those turbulent teenage years don't hold a candle to those turbulent young adult years. Because in those turbulent teenage years, they've still got a mom, mom and dad still got a tight rein on it. But when that transitory period begins to take place, and if we're not careful as a church, as a church world as a whole, not the church here, that's the reason we have a young adult Sunday school class because we want to be here for them in, in that period in time. We want to be here for them. I want to hold a line for them and tell them this is where you need to be. But I'm not going to shoot them as they're trying to get here. Yeah, I don't forget where I was struggling and what I was struggling with at 18 and 19. Right? Amen. All right, Mike, I made it easy for you. Come test it. That's definitely not easy to follow up on. Um, but I am glad for just the opportunity just to sit up here. It's it's a different experience to be able up here and watch rather than be down in my little corner there or all the way in the back, seeing the back of everyone's heads. But it does make me think about how little I do get in. It's just something I majorly need to work on, and I don't feel right about it. I don't. It's just something I never grew up doing it. I sat back there on a phone under a bench asleep. I won't be the first one to admit that, but it's something I need to work on. I don't, I don't feel right not saying that, but I'm, I'm glad for what's happening in this service. Can't wait to see what Braden preaches about. I promise I did not pay him to say all that. But it does look different from up here. Right? Amen. All right, I appreciate the young men. I appreciate Brother Braden. And early this week, I, I just I, I, I just felt it here praying. I, I, I was looking at it. I didn't know whose turn it was, and it really didn't matter. But, you know, just, just praying. And I felt like getting Braden to preach. Maybe we'd go that direction. I was going to talk to Steve if it was a youth service and then the way things transpired. And. I told Braden this afternoon, I said, then when you text me, he and I text about some things, uh, just scriptures and things and, and this week, and so I knew I was on the right track, and then I got thinking, oh, he's probably never going to text me again, <laughs> but I know God's been talking to him, I believe that, I believe God's been dealing with him, and uh, I, I want to I wanna make it easy on him tonight, I wanna let it, and you just help us push toward the altar service tonight. Would you just lift your hands and ask the Holy Ghost to have his way here as Braden comes. Father, thank you for the wonderful privilege you've had. God, anoint Braden tonight. Touch him. Give him a touch. Anybody nervous? I am. Um, I'm a, I am thankful to be able to preaching for the confidence that y'all do have in me. I'm going to be preaching from Exodus chapter 12 tonight. Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to start in verse number 31. And when you have it, if you would, stand with us for the reading of the word. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 31. The Bible says, talking about Pharaoh... And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up, and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We be all dead men. Turn with me to verse number 51. 
It says, And it came to pass the self same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Brother Gabbard, if you would just say the blessing over this. We see throughout the Bible, Egypt is painted a grim picture. You can look at all the nicknames of Egypt and all the synonyms, and some of the more common ones would be the land of affliction or the house of bondage, not really places that you would want to spend a vacation at. But for Israel, it was 430 years of strict bondage, of waking up every morning with the same goal in mind, I just got to get through today. I, I, I know that I'm in bondage right now. I know I'm in affliction. If I can just get through today. But to put that in broader terms, that would be 17 generations that not only were born in Egypt, but died there in Egypt. So to them, what it looked like is they were stuck. They were stuck in Egypt. God, we, we don't know what we're going to do here. God, we don't know how you're going to deliver us. You said you would. But God, in our eyes, we're just stuck. And you know, I, I've been a Christian long enough. I've, I've been a preacher long enough. I, I've seen people as they've got stuck where they were. They've got what we like to call a rut. And they got stuck in a ditch where they were in sin. And you know, uh, maybe they were like Israel. They wanted to get out. They, but they were those chains, they were oppressive. They were in bondage. And, and maybe they prayed like Israel night and day. God, you said you would bring me out of this. God, you, you told us the promise that one of these days that we would be taken out of this and I wouldn't have to worry about this bondage. But God, it's been five years and it's turned into 50. And God, 10 years has turned to 100. All the way for 430 years they were bound. But I, I was in the sound room just uh, probably three weeks ago and I just felt this, this passage come to my mind and I just wanted to come here and preach to y'all, it's time to leave. I said, it's time to leave. You know, we've, we've all heard the old adage, sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay. And in the end, it'll cost you way more than you were ever willing to pay. No truer words have ever been spoken, especially on the account of what Egypt really is to describe it because in all actuality Egypt is a jailhouse it, it is designed to purposefully and efficiently take every form of liberty that you have it is designed to choke out the freedoms that we so desire and enjoy it is designed that once you go in and once you try to taste of Egypt and the the world of sin you are never meant to leave once you go there, you're never meant to come out. It will trap you. It, it, it will keep you. And, and there's no escape for it, it seems like. You know, I've heard the stories of people, even people that I work with, um, of they're addicted to whether it's cigarettes or it's alcohol. And, you know, I've heard stories where people say, you know, I'm trying to quit. I, the other day I was working with a guy. And I was showing him something. And all of a sudden, he took something out of his pocket and put it in his mouth. And at first, I couldn't tell what it was. It was so quickly. And then he looked at me and he told me, I'm trying to quit smoking. And, you know, all I could think about was the bondage that it had him in. The chains that, that, that nicotine had had him wrapped in. The bondage. Um, there's times when you hear about alcohol users who... Who they don't want to anymore, but there's a point where they stop abusing the bottle, and the bottle stop hurts abusing them. And, and you hear about these, and they want to break free, but under no circumstances it seems like they can break through on their own power. It will take a higher power. But you, I was listening to something the other day, and it, it clicked in me that there is a higher power, because a songwriter had it right when he said. And there my burdened soul, my soul that it had the chains wrapped around it, it was suppressed, I couldn't breathe almost, my burdened soul found liberty, 
at Calvary. I want to tell somebody tonight, and, and it's been the burden of my heart for three weeks now, that there is liberty at Calvary, that there is freedom. You don't have to die in the chains that you're in. You don't have to go to hell in the chains that you're in. I, I don't know what it is that's bothering you. It could be something totally different, but the, there's liberty at Calvary. You know, and I don't mean to embarrass anybody, but, you know, Travis, I was there the morning when you got saved. I was sitting there beside Micah, beside where his parents are sitting now. And, you know, to a normal 10 or 11-year-old, it seemed like a average Sunday morning service. I was probably sitting back there drawing who knows what. Everything just felt average until they started singing about the blood. And it was about that time that, Something started pricking Travis Sly's heart. And something started telling him, Travis, I, I see the chains that's bound you. I see where you've been. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have to stay there. And I remember watching him as he came down to this altar. And as others uh, gathered around him and watched him weep. Because he was able to find liberty in those altars. I want to tell you, it wasn't just for Travis. It wasn't just for me when I found it or for the pastor. But I want to tell you that there is liberty for the average person as well. There's there's liberty for you. You don't have to stay in that bondage, but um, you can leave it. The Bible said in John 8 and 36, that the Son shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to let that eat at you. You don't have to let that keep you down and suppress you. But there is liberty at Calvary. You know, I, I think about that, that story in Acts chapter 12. I read it today about that story with Peter in prison. You know, the Bible says that, that there, it was late at night and that there was a church that was making prayer without ceasing for Peter. And I already said it was late at night and Peter was asleep. But it says in verse number 7 of Acts 12, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. And bind on thy sandals. And, and this, is what, this is what hit me. The Bible says, and so he did. I started thinking about, what if Peter would have said, God, it's, it's 12 o'clock at night. God, let me get 15 more minutes of sleep before you deliver me. God, I know you already took the chains off. Maybe I can rest a little bit more peacefully. What if, what if he would have said, God, just a little bit longer. What would have happened is Peter would have died there in the prison. But he said, uh, um, or in the Bible says, and so he did. He said, God, you know, you've, you've opened this way for me to have this liberty. God, I think I'm just going to take it. And you know, I, I, could, I was just thinking before service, I believe God's got, uh, he's talking to some people. And he's saying, I'm going to free you right here. I'll take the chains off of you. You don't have to live in the, that uh, bondage anymore. I'll, I'll take the chains and the shackles. I'll free you from the fetters. You don't have to worry about that anymore. But I wonder if anybody would say, God, I think I'll take you up on that offer. God, God I know I could sit here and end up dying in this pit where I'm at. But God, I'm, I'm just going to take you up on that offer. God, I'm not going to let myself rot here in this prison. I'm not going to get much farther than this. Y'all come to the music. Now, all I could think about for the last two or three weeks, I, I would pray about it, and all I could think about was God wants to set somebody free. God doesn't like having to see his children in bondage. He likes to see them at liberty. God makes a, many times he mentions liberty in the Bible, that you can have freedom. And the children of Israel is a very good example that you don't have to be perfect to have freedom. But you can come from some sticky situations. You can, you can come from some dark places. 
I, I, I know testimonies that I've heard, and I'm not going to say any of them or even say the names where I've heard people say it had me in bondage. Yeah. It wouldn't let go. And, and I've been there myself where something had me, and I couldn't get it to let go. But I'm so glad that I was able to come to church and I was able to find that there is a higher power that, that I can't do it on my own. Under Braden's own strength, I couldn't have broke the chains on my own. I, I couldn't have got rid of it on my own. But there was a time when I found that higher power that said, you know what, it's time to leave. And I'm going to help you do it. That you don't have to stay here anymore. If we could stand all around the house. Make this as easy and simple as I can. I felt it strong lately. God's wanting to deliver somebody and God's wanting to help somebody. But you're going to have to move. You're going to have to take the first step. The song says if you'll take one step, he'll take two. And I believe that with all my heart that if somebody would say, God, I'm tired of living where I'm at. God, I'm tired of living in the bondage. I'm tired of the chains holding me back. God, I'm tired of going to bed every night wishing that something was different. I'm trying to do it on my own power. But God, I'm going to lay it in your hand. And God, I ask that you will deliver me. I wonder, is there anybody that will say... I want freedom. Is there anybody that will say, I want liberty? The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I believe in these altars. God's Spirit's all over here. And I believe He's saying, if you'll try me, i got some liberty for you to try. You don't have to leave here the same way you came. But you can leave here free tonight. I wonder, is there anybody who will say, I I'm tired of living in bondage? I'm tired of letting the devil eat at me. Every time I turn around, it's just new bondage. There's a new chain that's holding me back, and I, it, it's tighter and tighter. But I wonder, is there anybody who will say that I want freedom, that I want liberty, that I'm tired of living this way? Oh, I believe God's trying to help somebody right here. I believe that he's trying to tell somebody I've got the liberty that you need I've got the help that you need but would you try it Peter had the choice to sit there in prison he had the choice to sit there and rot and end up letting them kill him and take his head but he said God I'm going to take you for your word and God I know it's dark outside I know I can't see the way but God, I'm going to trust you to lead me where I ought to go. I wonder, is there anybody? Uh, I'll bring us in to an altar in just a second. But is there anybody that will say, God, I need liberty. God, I'm tired of these, this pain. I'm tired of this bondage. But God, I'm ready to leave. Can we all come around the altar? I, I believe that there's liberty in this altar for people in bondage I believe that some can find some liberty here you don't have to leave here the same way you came but you can find liberty oh lock me up in a prison and throw, throw away the key And take, take away the vision From these eyes that now can see Deprive me of the food I eat and 
prison and oh throw away the key and take take away the vision from these eyes that now can see Deprive me of the food I eat And even bind my hands and my feet But just as long as I am Jesus Well then I still go free oh, 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 that I could still go free and tell me what kind of man would reach down his hand and do this for me Unworthy just to live, and I was not fit to kill. And then a man on the cross, he put me in his will and said, This. 